Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe and Isaiah from the Automator, and we were working. Uh, hopefully, you're a subscriber to our newsletter list. We send it every week. Uh, you can go to the Automator slash com slash news to sign up if you're not. Anyway, we were going through, and we've spent a lot of time over the last couple of weeks on cleaning up and maintaining this email list. Uh, it's it's much much more complicated than you might think. So Isaiah was working on cleaning up the names because sometimes people put in bad words and sometimes they put in email addresses or whatever. So we had an algorithm and that's where you want to chime in here, Isaiah, like the speed of what it was doing. Yeah. So in general, one of the things that I'm trying to do is creating like a little tool for you to have the list and just make it easier for you to clean around without having to go to any other program and so on. So the thing is that I have a list view and I'm going to show you now. Um, And that list view um, one of the parts of it is that before loading it up, we have this name review function that I'm looking for and that I want to make sure that um, if the name is, you know, uh, has some of characteristics, we just replace it to something that we need. Uh, some generic replacing name. the name, not the character, just to be clear. No, so, yeah, but it would be like the name, the whole name, right? And it would just be to something generic, just for us, just not to have bad words and stuff like that. So, email merge, right? Exactly. Now, the thing is, um, a long time ago, I think a few months ago, we did some kind of testing around the regular expression match kind of thing. And I remember that we did kind of like something very similar to what we're doing now. But what I want to do this time is actually show you a real life example where that actually shows up. So when I run the script, I get this uh, manual review list and I want to load it with new people and so on. So when it is loading, um, it does a few uh, things prior to loading the list. And now it's going ahead and loading the list. Anybody who has programmed prior to this, knows that this thing is really slow. What is going on? Like, why is it taking so long to load a list? And that is usually that usually happens when you have code that is not optimized or that you're doing something that, in a way, that could be better. Now, it is not bad. You always, or most of the time, you start with code like this and then you refactor it to make it better. Because you first get your idea out, this is what I want to do, and then later on you refactor it. But to understand what is going on, let me show you. Here, at the code that I started with, I go for each valid name in a list of valid names. So if you take a look at it, the list is 6,700 names. And it would go one by one. And if the name that you passed to me um, is in that list, I would just return the name back. So as soon as I find it, it just goes out. So I do not have to search the whole list. Now, the problem here is that you have two things going on. You have a for loop that goes line by line, but then for each of them, you're splitting the name as well. So that also adds some overhead. So for each name, you're doing two things prior to just deciding whether that is good. And in the case that the name is not in that list, you're going through the whole list, the 6,700 names, the complete list, and then you're performing some other checks. So again, for each name that is not in the list, you have a very big overhead. It's not good code. That's the reason why it's low. Um, I knew it. I just needed to have something at the beginning. But now in the end, I just switch it back to what is best. Well, what I consider best. There are other options around, which is regular expression matching. Inside that whole list, just go ahead and find me something with those boundaries in it. So I, whatever you pass, it has to match exactly what you passed. It cannot be inside another word, for example. Now, as soon as I do that change, let me show you the difference. Let me show you how that looks. Now, at the beginning, it's getting the emails, and it's just blazing fast. Okay, so I am going through the whole list, the 6,000. 700 names as well, but the difference in um, how fast it is doing it 
it's not really just like a difference. It is really noticeable. There is a very clear difference. Now, once I showed you that, you, you went like, really? Like, isn't it better to have an object to go ahead and do, you know, if the object has a key? And yeah, that's a valid question. Let's go ahead and double check. Well, that's what we're saying is, look, there's lots of ways to optimize and there still could be, right? But right. Um, right. What, what it really comes down to is if you think about it, the, what you're doing here in everything else we're going to do, we're going line by line and checking within something. With the exactly. regular expression, it takes the entire thing all at once and doing the bound, but it's it's still not it's not parsing it the same way, which it, it makes a lot of sense of why it's faster. And not only that, it is optimized. So the regular expressions engine, the regex, um, you know, PCRE engine that we use, it is optimized for that type of thing. So it is blazing fast. It, it uses less CPU than you might think. And that's what I'm going to show you right now, how, how, how big of a difference that is. So um, we... I'm just going to talk a little bit about the what are we doing here. So the reason why we're using the query performance frequency is because it is better than a tick count. And you, you were saying like, hey, isn't it better to use something else? Yeah, most of the time when you're just doing a very quick check, you can use the, the a tick count. Um, and the reason why you didn't like it, it was because it was always zero for regular expression. And he was like, it cannot be true. That cannot be possible. And you will see um, how can it do it. But yeah, so the first thing is that we get a frequency here. And I think I, I don't have to, in the end, I will just grab the starting time from the performance counter here and then perform the things that I want to do. And then in the end, Check the, la the 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 ending time, and then I will just uh, uh, subtract one from another, and I will tell you how how much it was. Right. So um, now at the beginning, and this is a very good thing that you spotted. We were just using the has key because that's what I'm interested in. But for you to do that, you have to have the object created first. Um, as I read a file and I have it as a variable first, it is not an object. So I did a little bit of code to convert it into an object, right? Um, if you do not take that into consideration, you might get false results. So let's go ahead and take a look at it, how it looks without that. And you will see what is going on. So I have three things, name object time, which is for the object that I created here. The string split time, which is by going in a for loop with splitting the lines one by one, or the regular expression time. If I run it, you will notice that just checking if an object has the key, it gives you 0 0.01 milliseconds, or you know, it's below a thousand of a second. So it is really a very low value. Regular expression is also there with 0 0.14. But going through a for loop, which is what I was doing, it was going at 32 milliseconds. That's what was going on. So this was really the difference between those values, like the, the, the string split time, like going through a loop is the worst of it. And usually that type of code, you do it in a way that it is just for testing or if it is something that you don't care about, that's okay. But if you want to do a program for somebody, that is, uh, that's not a good, that's like not a good number. Yeah. But if you asked me, you know, to try, I could make it worse. <laughs> you could make it worse. And actually that's exactly what happened because you were saying like, why don't we put it in an object and see it? Yeah. Well, for the has key function. Yeah, of course it actually looked Good, you know, 0 0.02, hey, lower than regular expression time. But, well, you have to create the object first because you cannot use a has key if it is not created. So let's just grab that piece of code right there. And it's the again, overhead, basically. It is yeah, overhead kind of and it is related to it. So let's put it there. And again, you're going in a for loop now. So now that you're in a for loop, things change. So now, as soon as I do that, now the results change drastically because now we have 32 and 32 and regex goes down as the best time by far 
at 0.1. So again, and, and if you run this several times, you might get different results, but they will be consistent with the fact that regular expression is always going to be faster in this type well, of situations. Yeah, however, here, here's a couple things to think about, right? Yeah. Which that's what, and I'll try to remember to link in the video or, you know, go search on the automator for fuzzy search in Python because it's a really fascinating video where these guys talk yeah. through ways to optimize yeah. what they're doing. And, you know, like one example I remember, it's like a 45-minute video, and I watched it years ago, so it's a little fuzzy, excuse me, fuzzy for me. They're doing fuzzy matches. Is, hey, like a two-letter character name could never match, match a 15-character letter name. So why would we bother comparing these two things? Like, you should never be doing that, right? So yeah. they thought of really creative things like this to speed up what they're doing. Um, yeah. And one of which, so there's that, but the other one that I didn't mention to you earlier, Isaiah, is, is when I initially wrote this while you were gone, you know, and was working on it, I was doing the name search stuff inside the work with the email address loop that I had, right? So, you know, before this, all this, we're, we're verifying the email address and reviewing a lot of stuff with that, mm -hmm. right? It has nothing to do with the name, but I have the name there. And so if that's already in an object, I'm now granted it's not a key, right, but you exactly. could have built an object at that time. And that's um, the thing. So, so yeah. So this uh, overhead that we're referring to, which is building the, the object, is done right. once at the beginning of the program. So after you do that, once the, pro when the program right. uh, loads, then you don't have to care about it, which is okay. Yeah, and you so can actually load it once. And now you have the value of the has key, which is actually faster than the regular expression match. So you, it is a trade-off. It is a trade-off, well, but it's good. But my point being, if we already had that for a different reason, right, that's when it would be like, hey, let's just use that, right? Like yeah, it, we it, can. it doesn't apply in this case. I'm just saying there are times where maybe you would take that approach. And for me also, often I want to have that, thing isolated and just have it in a in an object because I understand objects and how they're structured. So it's very convenient to have. But um yeah, as far as the blazing speed goes, yeah, the, that regex that's crazy fast as far as on the yeah, I was just very concerned with showing up zero with we were using what the A <laughs> with the A to count. Yeah, exactly. A to count. And right. I'm like, there's no way zero. And I like I just could Yeah. Let, let, let me explain exactly what is going on. So AT count is a variable that is set by AutoHotKey. And remember that AutoHotKey um, does his, uh, his actions performance every 10 milliseconds. So it is not, it, you're, you're not, you're not getting a one millisecond thing. It is every 10 milliseconds. So when I was doing the, the subtraction there, like AT count minus the starting time, it would give me zero. Because it hadn't even passed one millisecond yet. It's you know? under the threshold. Right? right. It is below the well, time frame that that particular yeah. variable is actually referring to. So, and, and see, when we were doing our little tests, you did it, what, half a dozen times easily? It was yeah. always zero. And it was at always. one point, <laughs> I would have been like, okay, you know, all right, I believe it. But it was always zero. That's where I'm like, always. you know. I've just had it where just the timing of what you're doing, you know, and things sometimes run a little slower. It, yeah. I didn't, I didn't believe it was accurate, but um, it's very cool that this has been proven out to be a, a, a fun little thing. Now, for the point that you were making, like they were looking for uh, ways to optimize it. So mm -hmm. you were just talking about, for example, the the um, name length. So I could just add a small check whether the length of the valid name that I took from here is more than the length of the name, well, then just break the loop. Equal, if sorry? it's just not equal, if, if it's, well, if you have them sorted, yeah, if, we, yeah, if, if our file, file is sorted. sorted right. 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 But um, exactly. So if our file, and I think it is, I have it sorted by length. Yeah, so, except for the last one you added right, manually. Right, right. Uh, well, yeah, but in general, it, it should be sorted by, let me, by the way, let just let's make sure that it does it, just to make right. sure. So by length, we have the length. So now it should be, I'm not really sure if it's doing it. But in any case, I no. do know, no, because of the, of the second the part. Gender. Yeah, because it is actually reading the whole thing. 
but it is not that bad. Yeah. Right? But in any no, case, it's close. but in any case, it would, it would, what it would do is just check the length if you have it sorted by that and go ahead and break the loop if the name is larger than what you're looking for, because you're not going to find it like that. And, and, and that would probably, um, make some, like, a, make a difference like just adding well, that let me see right. what happens because so in that video i was referring to they basically thought of ways to drop down drastically the number of comparisons they had to make right, right. and that's basically what they were doing. like why would we be comparing these other things if when... i didn't but in general those no are chance. right what i would say and this is the other thing what i would actually say in that regard Unless you really have the need to reinvent the wheel, then don't do that, right? So if you have a way to do it fast enough for what you need, regex match, just go, has a key or whatever, just use that. Now, if you find yourself in, in, in the unlikely event that you find yourself needing to really optimize it because you're dealing with a lot of data, a lot of computers or other things, then right. yeah, just think about how you optimize those kind of things. Um, but going through the trouble of doing all that when you can just do a regular expression match or um, a has key, then it's not worth it. Yeah, and and here, yeah, and here is where I would even say just to you as a FYI, like I know that first screen where it was going to you slow. I'm like, hey, I'm paying you know for the time it takes for you to solve this, right? And I'm not pointing fingers, but I'm just no, saying to me. It's not worth those extra minutes to have exactly. done that because it's an extra cost, right? Now, exactly. the fact will, that yes. this why, you know, I don't care, right? But the fact that we're going to create a video to help people, we're going to, one, test this and learn from it. So, hey, you know what? Yeah, okay, we've established this is a much faster way. We get to use this multiple times. That's why, to me, I was perfectly fine saying, you know, it's A, we get to repurpose this knowledge and use it at other times later, right? Now right. you've convinced me. Hey, yeah, the red jacks is a great, yeah, you know, and basically I was just gonna say, like that's I started with a simple approach. Now, if that is not working as I need it, I will not spend way too much time trying to figure this one out. I'll just change to regular right. expression match. That's it. Like, yeah, I'm done. I have your code. <laughs> you know, because right. I will not actually try to invent something that is already there. So in any case, sure. I, I hope that this is kind of like a a, a little bit of like a real life example of where you would, might find those kind of like um, uh, performance issues. Um, there are other well, more complicated, yeah. but this is kind of like one that you will see right away. If you're filling out a list view, what can you do about it? To not well, and another one just it was on the same project, but it was before as Ace had come back, and I started playing with it, and we were pulling in. We're actually, instead of using an API call to connect to the database, we're using MySQL, and it was pulling this table. And I happened to notice of like, oh, it's pulling, you know, select star, whatever, not. And I'm like, I'm just using the email and the name. And I'm like, I wonder uh, if that'll help uh, it set up at all. And I changed yeah. it, and it was like this drastic of a difference of like, a, wow, it suddenly yeah. was lickety split, you know, and, and I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. And the main reason why is that SQL query was taking everything and then shoving right. each thing into an object. And there was like 50 columns or fields, right? So it was like, same, that's same why way. it was so small. Same way yeah. in here, in which I would just go ahead and uh, uh, the code that I saw, because I was kind of like borrowing from the code that was already existing. What it was doing is for each email that he was doing, like for example, if he was in the list, he would actually send a, um, a SQL. Right request right for each email and i was like dude hold on let's make that a variable let's in the end i send that variable yeah. in there and just make one request in instead of 1000 <laughs> you know as soon as i did oh, that, that was, everything was so quick it was so, yeah. so fast right um it was but ironic <laughs> I must have had an earlier version of this because i told you i went through the exact same logic of like at right. first I'm like well i don't really care and then i'm like you know what this is stupid right like <laughs> sql can handle i looked it up and i was like you can handle a really really big list of things and, and i'll yes. never hit that peak so whatever exactly so in any case just usually 
if you hit uh, one of these issues, like a performance issue, you will notice right away, and there are ways for you to go ahead and solve the issue, but usually try to use the approach that already exists because it is faster for you. I just moved the line to down and added a variable that I'm going to send, and that's it. That was the solution to the problem. Yeah, and that's where, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you can often, using the debugger, start spotting where these loop, where you're like, oh, I'm <laughs> multiply doing this thing over and over and over and over, right? There's probably a better approach to that. And that's the thing. So if you're not using a debugger, you might only see the end result, and you don't even right. know where exactly. the... where the you, you might see that the list is loading slowly, and you might have kind of like an idea, but with a debugger, I just yeah. stop and I see, okay, here's it going. And now it entered this loop. Oh, this loop is the one that is doing what it's doing, right? So, yeah. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, thank you. I hope everyone enjoys that. Let us know if you have any questions.